Here at uh, Deutsche Goldmesse in Frankfurt, we have Rob McLeod from Black Wolf Copper and Gold. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me, Dominic. We have two projects that are located in uh, Southeast Alaska. We have our flagship Niblack polymetallic deposit. So it's mostly copper and gold, but there's also some silver and zinc. So it's a quite a substantial massive sulfide deposit. But uh, to, to be honest, based on uh, some of my family history, and I am an exploration geologist who loves to make new discoveries, uh, we have a gold-silver project called Cantu, which is the best-looking drill target that I have seen in my career. So I think we have the, the uh, possibility to make a very exciting new discovery at our second project. Now, your colleague behind the camera is also very excited about this project. Oh, well, for uh, geologists, love uh, big, wide veins of gold and silver, and this is what that target is that has never seen a drill hole before. And the history of discovery, not only in this area, the Golden Triangle, but uh, for a lot of your viewers that uh, love to speculate in, uh, in, in, uh, in juniors, it is the companies that put the first drill hole into a new discovery that usually are the best returns. So uh, like my colleague, uh, uh, if, uh, if you want to generate really good returns for, for your investors, find something brand new. So that's what we think we can do with our Cantu project. It's very exciting. So make sure that uh, in the spring of 2023 that uh, your, your viewers will be watching Black Wolf for the first holes into that project. I think the viewers can uh, grab the excitement that you have for this project. Well, well, it's, it, it is one that we are hoping to drill over the past summer um, due to some uh, bureaucracy with uh, the United States Department of the Interior that administers drilling permits. It took us a while to get our permits in place, not, not for any sort of anti-mining reasons, just uh, government can often move slow. So we are hoping to drill it this summer but we've had to wait. We will have to wait until next year. But that's, uh, that, that, that's the way it goes in exploration. The gold has been there for 200 million years. Uh, it's not going anywhere. So it'll be in the springtime we can put in those first few holes. But that said, we do have a bunch of assays that we expect over the next uh, few weeks from surface work that we've done, where we've had prospectors and geologists that have not only been looking at that Cantu big gold and silver vein, and it's 30 meters wide on surface, but a bunch of other satellite targets in the area in, uh, in places that have had no modern exploration. It's a very, very exciting uh, property. We also will have uh, for our flagship copper gold project, we have a new resource estimate that will be coming out in the next few weeks. So we think it's something that the market will really like and hopefully be a catalyst to some further uh, uh, drilling that we want to do next year. How are the financials? So uh, we're sitting with about a million dollars in the treasury. Uh, we will likely have to do another financing next year. That's, that's the way it goes. We've been hoping for uh, uh, some better markets to do that, but we have very good shareholders. We have two large institutional shareholders that each own about 10% Delbrook Capital, uh, which is Vancouver's largest uh, mining hedge fund, and uh, Crescat Capital, who are activist investors. And once they really get their marketing behind the story, you can really see some good returns. So on the ins and lots of good European funds, including some that we're seeing at the conference here today that have been strong backers. And, and uh, uh, certainly uh, the, uh, the, the feedback from all of them is that Black Wolf is a very good investment at these levels because we've been so cheap. Uh, speaking of cheap, there is a share price and there is value. Um, where do you see the fair value yourself of the company? So uh, I'll, uh, one of our large institutional shareholders um, is, uh, it's one of the larger US-based uh, funds um, uh, called US Global. 
And uh, there's, you know, he's regarded as probably one of the top for, for portfolio managers uh, in the specter, in the sector, Ralph. Uh, he has a value of just Niblack alone at uh, $85 million US. And we're currently staying at a market cap of 12. So um, we, we think in, in these type of markets, we be, should be trading at a few multiples of what we're, we're trading at today. Um, a little over a year ago, we were trading at $1.50. And with no material news, we have since come back down to 25 cents. And so uh, we think that in, on very little volume. So we think with some good catalysts that will be coming out in the next few weeks and few months, and certainly once we start drilling again, we should be back at those, those, uh, those valuations. And how much capital would you like to raise ideally? And how long will it uh, bring you through the years or months to come? So for the high grade gold silver target, the vein that's never been drilled, I would like to have about two to $3 million dollars for that program. For our large deposit for Niblack, what that property really needs is a big drill program. Um, like in the order of 10 to 15 million dollars. That's our market cap. We are not going to dilute at these levels, dilute existing shareholders just to have that program. I've been around the industry, I've, my family's been in the business for three generations. When the markets become good, it's these type of deposits like Niblack that have the big valuations that move really quickly. And when there's a lot of capital available, that's when we'll raise it. Protecting the company's share structure is really, really important to me with only 40 million shares outstanding. That's not a lot for one of these juniors. We want to ensure that that cap, that share structure stays good for when the markets turn in, in junior mining. And I think we're certainly going to get that in 2023. Do you want to drill the, the project yourself or are you open to um, selling them down the line? Oh, oh uh, we, so it's the same path that if you're going to be a developer and develop it yourself to whether or not you think you should sell the company. I've, uh, my last company was called IDM Mining. It was acquired a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, my, my colleague behind the camera, Jody, we had a big success with a junior called Underworld Resources uh, back in 2010 when we sold the company to Kinross. Um, you have to show to uh, the acquire, potential acquiring companies that you are prepared to build a mine yourself. Ultimately, what your shareholders want, they probably want you to sell. But you have to let the acquirers know that you are prepared to go down the development path if you have to. So the answer is always the same. You, you, you drill, you do your engineering studies, you do your permitting. And uh, if nobody comes and buys you, you have to be prepared to build it. Otherwise, probably the best return for your investors is to sell. One important thing in investing in mining stock is the management and the track record. Mm -hmm. You have one, uh, you mentioned that, uh, your partner also. And uh, you are coming from a dynasty of, of mining. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 I, I interviewed your cousin. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. My cousin Bruce McLeod, who's the CEO of uh, Sabina. My his sister um, uh, uh, Catherine, who's she's the chair of Kinross and been one of the most successful women in in, in Canadian mining. I'm a geologist by by uh, uh, trade and have had made lots of discoveries. Often it was for when I was younger and working for other people, such as Miramar mining, but. Uh, Uh, it is, we, we are a dynasty and, and we're, we're working in the Golden Triangle. That's where our, actually our families got started. The, for example, you, you interviewed Bruce, um, uh, uh, pr formerly Predium had the Bruce Jack mine. That was my uncle's old property and its name, Bruce Jack is named after Bruce, my cousin and my grandfather, Jack McLeod. So that area of northwestern British Columbia and southeast Alaska, uh, that's where our, our, our family has worked for generations. And 
And uh, I honestly think that we're the best in the business when it comes to, to making discoveries in that part of the world. Now we have right now Friday, so two days to, to go at the conference, but I'm, I'm thinking it's uh, hard to beat your excitement uh, in, the, in the coming uh, interviews that we'll make. Well, it's, um, hey, uh, uh, there is nothing that I love more, uh, maybe aside from my uh, Vizsla dog. So if any of your watchers follow me on social media, I, uh, I'm not involved with Vizsla resources, but I sure like the dog. My second most exciting thing is look exploring for gold. So you can follow me at goldfinder12 on the social medias and, uh, and uh, uh, certainly make sure Black Wolf is on your radar screen, particularly for next year when we're making that, uh, uh, putting the first few holes into Cantu. It's really, really exciting. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's such a spectacular property. How good is your track record in uh, telling the right price of gold and silver in the coming uh, weeks, months and uh, years as a geologist? Or do you, uh, don't, uh, don't you? I don't, um, I'm a gold bug. I'm a, I'm a silver bug as well too. Um, uh, I think fundamentally for, for, uh, and for copper as well too, uh, usually the markets move when we least expect it. Um, you look back in 2016, which we came out of a big depression in mining. My company at the time, IDM mining was trading at five cents. Two weeks later, we were trading at 25 cents. We, the share prices, and it wasn't just us, it was all the companies. There wasn't a real catalyst. Everything just started to move. And that's usually how junior mining works. It's where um, maybe there can be one or two small catalysts, but there seems to be a collective movement within all of the companies really quickly, just often over a few weeks time period. And it can be, when you least expect it. So I, um, I've kind of given up guessing when those movements are going to just uh, going to happen. It's be positioned to take advantage of them when they start to move. Like if you start seeing all of these penny stocks going up one or two cents, you know, per trading day, that's when things are starting to move, you know? And, um, my feeling uh, is that January or February of 2023, I think, is when tax law selling will be done. So it would be a good time for a lot of, you know, your viewers to be, take a look at companies like Black Wolf that have really been beaten up and, uh, and, and start taking some positions. Because I think we're going to have a nice move in, er, early in the year. But in terms of the bigger picture, when is gold going to break 2000 per ounce again? I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you think the tax loss thing uh, will be um, will be will be there this year because uh, no one has gains? Um, there's somebody's always making money in the business, and a lot of the uh, the funds, um, a lot of them are hedge funds, and they make money in bull markets and they make money in in, in bear markets. And, uh, and same with sophisticated investors that can short some of the overvalued companies. There's always people that have made gains. T tax loss is, it's real every year. It probably won't be as deep maybe as last year, but um, you know, we're almost at the end of November now. So I think a lot of the prices that you've seen, you see now are some of the, the lowest that a lot of these juniors will go. You, you know, over previous years, usually the first or second week in December, that's when people start saying catch up. Like some of these stocks have been way oversold. So usually the, the, we're probably right around the bottom, like right now of any sort of seasoning selling. But, um, uh, you know, I trade lots of other juniors as well too, just in my spare time. And, um, I'm getting ready with a shopping list for some that are, you know, that are really, really beaten up, particularly gold and triangle companies. So I think uh, looking at like I help out a junior called Strike Point Gold, I think that they'd be a, a good buy to look at. Uh, I really like Scotty Resources uh, that are also in the Golden Triangle. It was an old mine that my uncle developed 
there's some really good buys out there right now. And from somebody who has never invested into mining in Germany, it's not Canada. So uh, there are a lot of people who could invest in the mining business but uh, have never done it yet. Um, what would be your elevator pitch to, to look at uh, the mining sector? Well, for for uh, people that are investing, that uh, that uh, th there there are two reasons. The first for gold is that gold has been uh, a store of value and a currency for ever since civilization started in all corners of the planet, and it will always be there. We will always need gold, particularly during times of crisis. It's also the top performing commodity, usually once a decade, and we haven't had it in a long time. So always make sure you have some exposure to gold. The second is there's a scarcity of metal and uh, particularly copper. There are, if you look out five years to 15 years, there is gonna be a serious critical shortage around the planet of the most important industrial metal. So make exposure, if, you're, if you've never invested in juniors before, but you'd like some exposure to commodities, those are the two big ones that always have some value. You can speculate in lithium, um, you know, other metals that, that uh, right now are quite hot, battery metal types, gold and copper. I've been working in this business for now over 30 years. And as long as I was old enough to listen and listen to my father and my uncle and their friends speculate about mining, it's very cyclical. You can make lots of monies in cycles. We are at the bottom of the current cycle for metals. Prices are good, but once they start moving a bit, you will get multiple percent, multiples of return of your investment. So make sure you have some exposure to metals. If it's your first time investing, you should probably look at bigger companies that are bigger than Black Wolf. Unless you're really good at trading, you know, these stocks can go up and down quite violent. So having some exposure to some producing companies might be the best first step for initial investors, rather than is my, my sincere advice. But if you like to speculate, you know, if you allocate a certain percentage of your portfolio that, you know, it can, there is no more exciting business than junior mining. When discoveries are made, like when Jody and I discovered the white gold deposit for uh, underworld resources, it was the most, one of the most exciting times of my career. Finding, uh, making a discovery where you can add billions of dollars in, in value in an area that in the business we would formally call moose pasture is one of the most exciting things to do as a, as a speculative investor. So, and as let alone an explorer. So, uh, uh, anyways, it's, it's a really fun and exciting business. Get subscribe to some newsletters, subscribe to, um, to, uh, um, people that can do the research for you, uh, that you trust. And there's quite a, quite a few really good ones in Europe. So, um, maybe we'll be interviewing some at, uh, at this show. Thank you very much, Rob McLeod. Uh, well, thank like. you very much. And uh, uh, follow me again on Twitter at Goldfinder12. If Twitter is still around, they're speculating it might get canceled today, but I'm sure it'll be around for a bit. And blackwolfcopperandgold.com and, Black Wolf, and, Gold .com, and uh, my contact information is on our website.